الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أرسله بالحق بشيرا ونذيرا أما بعد فإن خير الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار All praise is due to Allah سبحانه وتعالى We praise Him, we seek help from Him, we ask forgiveness from Him, we seek refuge in Him from our own evils and from our own sins. Whomsoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides, no one can misguide. And whomsoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala misguides, no one can guide them to the straight path. And I bear witness. That there is none worthy of worship except one God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, alone, without any partners. And I bear witness that Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is his final prophet and messenger. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's peace and blessings be upon him, his family, his companions, and those who followed him until the day of judgment. Respected brothers and sisters in Islam. Today... I would like to talk to you about a great hadith narrated by Mu'ad ibn Jabal radiallahu ta'ala anh, that he said I once asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam O Messenger of Allah please tell me the action which may help me to enter paradise and keep me away from the hellfire. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam answered, You have asked about a matter of a great significance, but it is easy for the one for whom Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala makes it easy. Worship Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and do not associate any partners with him perform salah prayer pay zakah charity observe the fast during the month of ramadan and perform the pilgrimage to mecca hajj then the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam continued and added shall i tell you something about the passage to excellence and virtue Fasting is the shield and charity for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala erases the sins. As water extinguishes the fire. Similarly, the optional night prayer also wipes away the sins. Then he, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, recited from Surah Al-Sajdah, verse number 16 to 17. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم تتجافى جنوبهم عن المضاجع يدعون ربهم خوفا وطمعا ومما رزقناهم ينفقون فلا تعلم نفس ما أخفى 
يخفي لهم من قرة أعين جزاء بما كانوا يعملون. They spent the whole night praying to their Lord in fear and hope. And they spent charity in Allah's causes out of what we have been given. No one knows what is kept hidden for them of happiness as a reward for what they have done. Narrated by Tirmidhi. Then the Prophet wasallam added, May I tell you something about the foundation of the religion and its pillars and its peak. I said, Certainly, O Messenger of Allah, he, the Prophet wasallam said, The head of the faith is Al-Islam. Its support is prayer and its peak is jihad in the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked, May I tell you about something which is the controller of all this? I said, Certainly, Messenger of Allah. Upon this, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam took hold of his tongue and said, Keep this under control. So I said, O Messenger of Allah, will we be called to account for what we say? The Prophet ﷺ answered, Of course. Is there anything that pushes people onto their face into hellfire more than the harvest of their tongue? Then Mu'ad bin Jabal radiallahu ta'ala an was an Ansari of the Khazraji tribe. He was known for his gentleness. He was known for his generosity. And he was known for his modesty. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam stated that Mu'adh was the most knowledgeable in the entire Ummah. Concerning what is halal and what is haram? In this hadith, Mu'adh radiallahu ta'ala told us that he asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to guide him to an action that will help him enter into paradise and to keep him away from the hellfire. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam first response was, you have asked about a great matter. But it is easy for whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes it easy. Indeed. Indeed, respected brothers and sisters in Islam. <coughs> could there be a greater matter than that? This we can see from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's response. That it is not only a great matter. It is also a very difficult thing to achieve except for those on whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed. <coughs> and he has bestowed his grace indeed fulfilling the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and staying away from what he has prohibited in this long struggle life without Allah's help. We would never be successful. And then he said to him these answers. Number one, to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. And not to associate anything with him. To fear none but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And to act according to what the Holy Quran says in Surah Al-An'am. Verse number 162 to 163. Had Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, 
شريك له وبذلك أمرت وأنا أول المسلمين سيئ محمد Verily my prayer, my sacrifice, my living and my death are for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the Lord of mankind. He has no partner and of his I have been commanded and I am the first of the Muslims. Secondly, to fulfill the pillars of Islam, of praying, paying zakat, fasting and performing the hajj. Then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam guided him to the gate of goodness which leads to paradise. Optional fasting is the shield, like the shield that once uses on a battlefield as the shield protects a person from the enemy. The act of fasting protects a person from committing sins and from entering into the hellfire. There are specific days on which Muslims are encouraged but not to obligated to fast. These include the day of Ashura, the day of Arafah, the days of the first nine days of Dhul Hijjah, six days in the month of Shawwal, three days of every month, and Mondays and Thursdays of every week, respective brothers and sisters in Islam. Charity erases sins as the water switches off the fire, especially those done in secret. The Prophet wasallam said, the secret charity Wives, the anger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told him about the importance of the night prayers. In another hadith that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said about those prayers. Every night there is a special time during which whatever a Muslim asks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of any good thing any good relating to this life or the hereafter, it will be granted to him. And this moment comes every night. The Prophet Sallallahu also said, the first thing about which a person shall be questioned on the day of judgment will be Salat, prayer. If his prayer or her prayer are found in order, he would be considered as a successful person and would achieve his objective. But if it is incomplete, he would or she would be a loser. If any shortcoming is found in the obligatory salat prayer, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will command to see whether the slave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has offered any optional salah so that the obligatory salah might be made up by it. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also said, the best prayer after the obligatory is the night prayer, narrated by Tirmidhi, respected brothers and sisters in Islam. Then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Shall I inform you of the head of the matter? The head of the matter is submission to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Submission to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And to testify of the faith plays a similar role to the head of the human body. Without the head, there is no life. Without submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his commandments, there is no Islam and there is no hope of entering into the paradise or escaping from the hellfire. That the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa made it clear 
for Mu'ad radiallahu ta'ala an, that the highest deed in the religion of Al-Islam is struggling for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught Mu'ad radiallahu ta'ala an, and all of us that a very important and essential issue for Muslims is to control of their tongues. To control our tongues. Because what the person says can take him to paradise. And sometimes the word said by some and that that tongue can take them to the hellfire. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect all of us. وآخر دعوانا الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد respected brothers and sisters in Islam in this last part of the hadith that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam goes further to indicate that controlling and holding one's tongue is the foundation of all good both in this life and the hereafter some might wonder why it is the case that the deeds of the tongue can have such significance as to take someone to the hellfire, can they really be that harmful? Let's consider the sins of the speech. They include backbiting, spreading rumors, lying, giving false witness, shahada, and associating partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, doing shirk, which is the greatest sin for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In fact, most sinful act in general are usually accomplished by speech, by saying. Nowadays, respected brothers and sisters in Islam, when the means of communication are so many, so informal and so immediate, we have to be especially careful we have to realize that our words form parts of our deeds and we must guard them as carefully as our actions. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, a man says something without understanding and something without understanding is signifies which pleases Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. In return, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala records his pleasure for him till the day of judgment when he will meet him on the day of judgment. Similarly, when a person says something without understanding its significance which displeases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he subhanahu wa ta'ala records his displeasure for him till the day when he will meet him on the day of judgment narrated by Tirmidhi Sufyan ibn Abdullah said I asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam O Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tell me something which I may hold fast to and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said say that my Lord and sustainer is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then stick to it. He then asked again, What is the thing which you consider as the most harmful to me? He held his tongue. 
and said this, narrated by Tirmidhi. In the end, I would like to pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from those who do acts that will lead to paradise and keep us away from the hellfire and to guide us to the straight path. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless our elders. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless our children. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless our mothers and sisters. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect all of us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us understand according to the Quran and the Sunnah of our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And those who are sick, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give them complete shifa. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cure them. And those who has passed away, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive their sins and grant them highest place in Jannatul Firdaus. Inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi Ya ayyuhal ladhin amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين وأذل الكفرة والملحدين ودمر أعداء الدين وانصر عبادك الموحدين وانصر عبادك المخلصين وانصر عبادك المؤمنين ربنا ظلمنا أنفسنا وإن لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنكونن من الخاسرين ربنا هب لنا من أزواجنا وذرياتنا قرة أعين واجعلنا للمتقين إماما ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يسفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين أقم الصلاة Please straighten your lines and don't leave any gaps. Allahu Akbar. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim Maliki Yawm Al-Din Iyaka Na'abudu wa Iyaka Nasta'in Ihdina Al-Sirat Al-Mustaqim صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين 
سبح اسم ربك الأعلى الذي خلق فسوى والذي قدر فهدى والذي أخرج المرعى فجعله غثاء أحوى سنقرئك فلا تنسى إلا ما شاء الله إنه يعلم الجهر وما يخفى ونيسرك لليسرى فذكر إن نفعت الذكرى سيذكر من يخشى ويتجنبها الأشقى الذي يصلى النار الكبرى ثم لا يموت فيها ولا يحيا قد أفلح من تزكى وذكر اسم ربه فصلى بل تؤثرون الحياة الدنيا والآخرة خير وأبقى إن هذا لفي الصحف الأولى صحف إبراهيم وموسى الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين هل أتاك حديث الغاشية وجوه يومئذ خاشعة عاملة ناصبة تصلى نارا حامية تسقى من عين آنية ليس لهم طعام إلا من ضريع لا يسمن ولا يغني من جوع وجوه يومئذ ناعمة لسعيها راضية في جنة عالية لا تسمع فيها لاغية فيها عين جارية فيها سرر مرفوعة وأكواب موضوعة ونمارق مسفوفة وزرابي مبثوثة أفلا ينذرون إلى الإبل كيف خلقت وإلى السماء كيف رفعت وإلى الجبال كيف نصبت وإلى الأرض كيف سطحت فذكر إنما أنت مذكر لست عليهم بمسيطر إلا من تولى وكفر 
فَيُعَذِّبُهُ اللَّهُ الْعَذَابَ الْأَكْبَرُ إِنَّ إِلَيْنَا إِيَابَهُمْ ثُمَّ إِنَّ عَلَيْنَا حِسَابَهُمْ الله أكبر